Hi folks, my name is Jay Amerlinson. I'm a transformation engineering lead here at Software AG and a specialist in the Eris platform. And today we're doing another in our video series called Help, I'm an Eris admin. Tips and tricks for you as your first time administrating an Eris instance or project, or even if it isn't your first time, maybe some things to brush up on skills you might need to help get your organization or project working even better on the Eris platform. Um, and we reached a part of the, the series where some of these tips aren't things you wouldn't necessarily have to do for the first one, but they'll definitely be helpful. And it's, this is an important piece of the puzzle, which is building a common look and feel. Now we've talked before about the idea of method filters. And that's really the hard governance behind what types of models, types of objects, types of attributes, types of connections and assignments you're allowed to use. Essentially just setting the sort of data structure for how Eris works. Templates are the other side of things. They control the visual formatting by which everything is governed inside models. So as well as both you know, um, your models, your objects and your connections all carry with them using a template, visual formatting defaults that are gonna be applied. And it helps users to A, use the right uh, sort of visual, visual formatting the first time they make content. And B is if they've chosen to change it, you can apply templates to models, uh, sort of snap them back into alignment, if you will. So let's take a look at what that is. Now, templates are maintained in Eris Architect, um, sort of the same place method filters are maintained. If I'm gonna to go to Eris Administration, um, and you'll see under conventions, instead of looking at our filters, uh, we're gonna be looking at our templates. Uh, now the templates, you, 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 uh, you've got a couple of sort of defaults uh, out here. Uh, so here, here are my defaults on my templates. Um, and then I, I can have, so for the, I've got a couple of sort of templates in place and here are my template uh, definitions. Uh, so here are the things that I can have. So let's, let's take a look at what a default template would be like in Eris. And I'll just walk you through the kinds of things you can do in templates. Um, you might not want to start with this, this off the bat, but it'll be good as you go through things and sort of establish a norm. And those templates are things, once again, you apply those templates to uh, models, to databases. You know, as, as we took a look before, if I right click and choose properties on a database, um, well, I do have a method filter. I can also select the, the, the palettes. I can select which templates by default show up. Um, I can, I can you know, control and apply templates to my models. Um, so for instance, if I'm designing in a model, um, I, can, I can quickly apply or reapply uh, templates. Uh, I'll give you a perfect example of this a little bit later. Let's take a look at what a template looks like uh, to create. So you can duplicate templates if you wanna you know, make a new one based off of previous templates. Um, or you can just edit the template you have as is. So what do, what do they contain? Well, templates contain something that looks a lot like method filters. It goes through this sort of step-by-step -step process of laying out what you would have in a database. But in the case of this, we're not going through it from the perspective of the models, objects, connections, attributes, assignments. We're going through it from which symbols are available so here's a list of all the symbols that we want to include in our template. Note that when you apply a template, you, if you didn't include the symbol, uh, that doesn't matter. Um, if, you, if you didn't include the symbol in your method filter, it doesn't exist. If you didn't include it in your template, you're just saying, please use the Eris defaults for what the format is going to be. And if you saw it before, we added a, uh, one of my previous videos, we added a nice new uh, type of symbol uh, called a risk bell. So I'm gonna go add that to my template. And let's select the symbol appearance. Um, so there's some things you might want to do. So for instance, let's go back down to risk bell. And that risk bell, I can start doing things like, ah, oh, I want to add a certain line color to my risk bell. Let's make a risk bell red. Uh, I want to add a line style. I can add a fill color. So let's have a solid fill of, you know, yellow. Um, I can add shadows, I can add scaling. And this is, the scaling is perhaps the most important part of all uh, of this particular menu because you're, you want to make sure you're scaled correctly. So when you place the, the object in the model, you're not placing a huge object. So for instance, by default, I, when I place my risk bell, I noticed it was a little small. So I'm gonna add by default scaling of 110 by 110. Um, which is gonna add a little bit of things to me. Um, and I do like the idea of adding a little shadow behind it, so risk bell, um, or maybe a 3D effect, who knows? That could be a nice way of, of sort of bringing things together. And then 
The next thing is something we talked about a little bit before is symbol attributes. So uh, symbol attributes, like for instance, name appearing in the middle, that's just a default for everything. In the case of our risk bell, we'll, we'll note that it's kind of a full you know, thing. I actually wanna make my name to not appear in the middle, but appear below it. So I can move that default attribute. Um, and I can also add other attributes. So for instance, if I wanted to do like, what's my uh, let's see, accumulated amount of damage uh, reduction or what's my uh, probability or things like that, or occurrence frequency, there we are. And I wanna add that in the center because that's something that actually I do care about. Um, and I'm gonna add with its attribute name or in the case of like something like a, your risk uh, attributes or things like that, where you've added a, a visual indicator, I talked about that before, but like a values box has a bunch of selections you can make and you can assign a symbol to each of those selections. I could say, well, actually represent this particular attribute as the symbol that is supposed to be there. So for instance, if it's a, you know, it's a very high risk uh, thing, put a, put a red dot in the middle rather than the word high risk. And so you can set that up here. So I'm gonna put it with the attribute name and there we are. So occurrence frequency in the middle, name down here. And then it's the same thing with connections, but, but the, diff, the different thing is that connections, you can choose line colors, you can choose your line style, whether it's solid, dashed, or dotted, it's weight. Um, an arrow towards source and target are also important, the different styles of arrows, and to, 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 to define whether or not this type of connection is meant to be bi-directional, so it's supposed to have arrows in both ways. Um, there's no direction indicated, which means no arrows, or unidirectional like we have here, um, where there's an arrow towards the target um, of, a, of a forward arrow. And then of course, some connections can have attributes. Perfect example of that is uh, a connection like uh, activates. Uh, might, you might wanna have the attribute condition expression, which is like yes or no. Uh, the kinds of things you'll find in the BPMN model coming from a gateway and going to an event. Um, so I can define which ones are here and just the same as I did before, I can choose where to place it. I can freely place it. I can give it a, an actual like number of millimeters off the center line, both positive and negative. So you can remember that. Um, that's a really handy way of making sure you have everything where it's supposed to go. And that's once again, why you wanna make sure your scaling is consistent because these freely placed attributes, like for instance, I wanted to hit just the top right corner perfectly of a, an object. I have to freely place this attribute um, and then also make sure that my, my attributes were consistently uh, the same size uh, or by objects with the same size. And lastly, you can define a model background. In the case you have, we have, a, a, they don't see this quite as often with our, our clients um, because it can get kind of jarring to have like, instead of a white background, to have a particular like very stark background. But there are some that choose subtle backgrounds that sort of define everything. You can also choose uh, backgrounds that, that would apply to, to models that are in a certain database um, that have always have the background of like draft uh, at, a, at an angle. Uh, that's a good possibility. And so I can finish this particular template uh, and I can now use this template uh, in my models um, and apply it to my model. So a perfect example of that is I'm gonna just open up a rand my entry model um, and I can go over here uh, and if I, if, if I have a, uh, you know, I'm concerned about things, I can apply a template to my model um, and I can choose to do that uh, to a particular all occurrences in my particular model. Um, and if, if I've deviated from the standard, uh, it'll snap me back pretty quickly to that standard, um, which is really handy, uh, particularly if you're trying to administrate a bunch of models which haven't followed the right, you know, sort of uh, style and format and sizing things, you can quickly snap them back by applying the template. But you can also set a default template, and as you said here, we saw before, um, and be able to use that on your models in your databases. And so that's using a template. It's uh, it's pretty simple to set up, pretty easy. Just you know, you have to have this conversation with your business and make sure that you know that what they're seeing on the page matches up with what they thought. So that you what you want a risk bell in your risk diagram. Uh, you wanna make sure that that's the right size. You wanna have organizational units in your org chart that you want, you want this icon to be that icon of an org. Sure, um, once you've established that icon, that size, that color, set it in a template. Make sure that that template's applied to all the models that it exists in and you're golden.
Well, once again, I'm JM, uh, JM Marilyn, and it's a pleasure to speak with all of you today about things that I care about, which is being a good ARIS admin. Uh, please leave a, a, a like, comment, a share on any of these videos. Um, let us know if there's anything else you'd like. Um, we're, we're making these video series to help all of you out. Um, all of the burgeoning ARIS professionals and admins are folks who've been doing it for years, but still want a little brush up. Um, and we're, we're excited to get some feedback and be able to help you do what you need to do to make ARIS successful in your organizations to the maximum capacity. Thanks so much, we'll see you in the next one.